how do successful government executives deal with information overload these days? One technique is the use of strategic analytics. Hi, I'm John Kamensky with the IBM Center for the Business of Government. Today, I'd like to summarize for you some of the key points in a recent report of ours, Strategic Analytics in Government. It's by Tom Davenport and Shirka Javanpar. Davenport and Javanpar define analytics as the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, explanatory and predictive models, and fact-based management, all to drive decisions and actions. They found that recent breakthroughs in data capture technologies, data standards, data storage and modeling, and optimization technologies now allow large-scale analytic programs. These are being used extensively in the private sector. They've developed a set of characteristics to assess the readiness of different government program areas and using strategic analytics themselves. They call their five-point readiness assessment DELTA, D-E-L-T-A. The D stands for data. Do the analysts have access to high-quality data? The E stands for enterprise. Is there an enterprise-wide perspective towards data collection? The L stands for leadership. Is there leadership in the organization that focuses on fact-based performance improvement? The T stands for target. Is there a long-term strategic target for the analyses that are being conducted? And then finally, the A stands for analysts. Do, do they have a cadre of analysts to be able to make sense of the data? They then applied this readiness assessment to several different government program areas, such as health care and tax collection, as examples of where strategic analytics are being used some examples. For example, in healthcare, there's several examples. Uh, one is the use of evidence-based medicine. For example, in the Veterans Health Administration, it uses electronic records, a database of patient records, performance and outcome measures, and a technology assessment program to facilitate evidence-based uh, decisions. And as a result, health outcomes are oftentimes better than in private hospitals. Another example in healthcare is fraud prevention. Nassau County in New York State saw claims for Medicaid reimbursement decrease by $1 million after launching their analytic fraud prevention initiative. That effort reduced duplicate payments, overpayments to health care providers, non-billing to Medicare, and miscoding of diseases and payments. Another example in health care is disease management. Medicare found that 14% of its beneficiaries who have congestive heart failure account for 43% of Medicare spending. By using analytics to remind patients of scheduled tests and treatments, they expect to reduce costs. Similarly, examples in applying strategic analytics and collecting taxes found it was possible to better project revenues, reduce lost revenues through better compliance, better detect fraud, and improve taxpayer customer service. The most interesting insight in this report was the conclusion that while analytics is often touted as technological innovation, in fact, analytic approaches require managerial innovation in order to be effective. We hope that you read this full report and apply its assessment criteria on your agency's programs, and we hope it inspires you to act on its insights. You can download a free copy of the report at businessofgovernment.org.